there is a huge variety of J2 fan games to play. In this series, we will explore the wacky and wild creations that go mostly unnoticed. This episode, we are back in Naji's Towers of Craziness. If you haven't watched episode 2 part 1, do that now as that has a lot of background information. Welcome to the second part to the Naji's Towers of Craziness saga. In this episode, we will cover 5 more towers. These will range from some fairly easy towers to some incredibly difficult and enduring creations. We will also cover a secret meat and even the citadel, so stick around. Before we get to the towers, let's go through some awesome lobby secrets. You may have seen a few if you have already watched episode 1. For our first secret, go between the credit and tower of perfect colours pawn. Inside that gap, you will find a secret block which says Haha, funny part, XD, 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 funny, haha, XD, laughing emoji, lol, 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 XD, D, D, D. This block is unanchored and can be moved around. This second one is not really an easter egg, but it is an interesting thing. Naji is from France, and if you go to the languages, you will see that the experience language is sent to French original. I don't know if this is for a reason relating to development, however it is a pretty niche secret. To find this third secret, go to the credits. Once you are at the credits, go right and you will see a minifigure of Naji. It's a 3D version of Naji's avatar on Discord. This next secret is located by scaling up the mountain that the intense towers lie on. On top of there, you will see a twist block. Similarly to the Naji secret, this is just a 3D version of Twist's character. Additionally, there is another secret hidden around the mountain. When you are on top of the mountain, you can jump down on the other side and be greeted with evil Mr. Bowen. Doesn't it look so cute? On the topic of Twist, this next secret is his cave or hidden base. To get to it, go further in the direction of evil Mr. Bowen. In the cliffside of some of the terrain, you will find a small cave. This is called Twist's Hangout Place. In this area, there is a twist block sitting near a table with pizza and an empty fridge. Fallen tower models of Tower of Twisted Troubles and Tower of Perfect Colours. A vertical chair stolen from Naji. An attempted illusion. Twist's mini curator pain museum. A subsy cube. And a campfire in the middle. And lastly, two pretty hard jumps, which includes a 3x2 wraparound and an 11 stud wraparound. Welcome to one of the oldest towers in Naji's Towers of Craziness. Created by T underscore AZK, it starts off in the parking lot of an office building or hotel. I don't know what it is. Anyway, you scale up this building in a very similar way to Tower of Tokyo Heights. Once you exit the building, which is at floor 5, you enter the sky area. This area has sky stuff like clouds and grey clouds, but it also transitions into an ocean theme for the rest of the tower. If you have played this tower, then you will notice that it is a lot more classic than other towers. Even if the quality does not match other towers, it is still really fun to go through and beat. It is one of the best classic towers I have played. Being high hard at 3.72 or 6.86 times harder than Tower of Newcomers, it is a good skill booster if you're getting into hobbies. Last thing is that if you saw in the intro of the last part, this tower was in my 100 subscriber special video, which is pretty cool.
I love the atmosphere the tower has and the silly subtle humour it has in the building. The adventure it takes you on is very interesting, it had me hooked on each floor. Building on from that, the theming is very nice and even if it does not make sense, it is very cool. The gameplay is fun to play. This is the first time I'm saying this in the series, but it had fun pushbox sections. The gradient was very pleasant to look at. However, the gameplay and creativity was lacking. They could have been better, but this is a classic tower so it may be a nitpick. Even if the themes were nice, they did not make sense. It is similar to Tower of Fabulous Exploration, but if the themed sections were mixed around. The indication could be improved too. I was confused in some areas and that made me skip some sections with some very cool skips, but skips are also counted as a flaw. Tower of Serpentine Fun is going to be narrated by my friend Constellations. You can check him out down below. Do you remember the Tower of Craziness in Episode 2 Part 1? Well, this is the revamped version of that tower. This is the easiest difficult tower at low difficult, which is 4.30. It's 10.05 times harder than the Tower of Newcomers. The name derives from the mythical creatures called Serpents. Serpents are snake-like creatures, and they can contort in a similar way to the frame of Tower of Serpentine Fun. This is the easiest current tower without a gradient. It uses prominently yellow, green, and purple floor colors. The tower portal has two signs, one saying that it's by Najim Android, and the other saying may be a little laggy, as this is the first tower to use a lot of client objects. Even when compared to other towers in the rain, Tower of Serpentine Fun is around the same length, being around 12 to 15 minutes on an average run. The tower uses a lot of catch nets, especially in the horizontal floors. is inside them.
The gameplay is varied and unique. It keeps you engaged throughout the tower. The gameplay is consistent throughout the tower, as if, even with cash nets, it still stays the same difficulty. The tower is creative as it uses some interesting mechanics. It has a very unique design, keeping the tower new, fresh, and interesting. The playful music added to the bright and optimistic atmosphere of the tower, and the frame colors are pleasant. Even if they are not a gradient like other towers, it still feels very well. However, even if the tower is creative, it does not introduce anything new or unique. The creativity is very linear. The client objects are only used in their intended ways. The indication and route progression could be a little better, because it feels very basic and sometimes I was confused on where to go. The tower also has various skips, including ones that skip entire floors. And lastly, a nitpick of this tower is that it feels out of place when compared to other towers. Welcome to the second completely purple-ish tower. This is placed at 4.72, also known as 13.45 times harder than Tower of Newcomers. To no surprise, the main quirk of this tower is that it has a massive violet pillar scaling up in the inside. The pillar stays the exact same size throughout each floor, taking up about one ninth of the total floor size. This tower uses universal platforms to indicate solid client objects, while it uses inlets to indicate can glide false parts. It was added on the 16th of February 2021, being its third year standing. Unlike Tower of Serpentine Fun, this tower has a nice gradient. It goes from a purple colour to a dark violet colour, with the middle section being a more vibrant violet. This is the second tower in the Advanced Towers section, and is the easiest tower to have a not suggestive for mobile sign on the portal. Floor 10 has a catch net, which is a relief as this tower is semi-punishing and is also not very full. Also, at floor 10, there is an instant kill brick right before the wind pad. This tower is around the same length as Tower of Serpentine Fun, an average run being anywhere from 10 to 14 minutes long. Hopefully you enjoy this montage.
As always, I enjoyed the pleasant detailed designs. The use of multiple materials further enhances the atmosphere and feel of the tower. There was a good variety of client objects used, further increasing the intrigue the tower generates. The effect of each platform is very obvious. For every glue platform, I knew that it was going to fall, same with other types. The frame colours are very nice, they don't hurt the eyes, except for floor 10. The music choices represent the tower very well. The upbeat music choices add to the energetic and moving atmosphere the tower has. On the other hand, the indication needs to be more obvious. Even if it was obvious what the client objects are going to do, the route progression on where to go from the client objects was very vague. Same with the bounce pads. They do not have indication to which direction they would shoot you. I didn't find the difficulty consistent throughout the tower. Some areas felt harder than others. The gameplay could have been improved too, as it felt repetitive and didn't really have any interesting jumps. Welcome to the neat in Naji's Towers of Craziness. This memed tower format fits the acronym of this tower very well, as it goes through a few memes throughout the neat. It's hidden pretty well in the meme room, at the lower part of the lobby near the lake. To get to it you need to click a button on a stud next to the small Mr. Bong sitting on the grey crate. It was not always like this though, it used to be accessible by clicking on the stud Mr. Ball was sitting on. This is a fairly difficult need, being a comfortable mid-challenging at 5.52, which is 23.43 times harder than Tower of Newcomers. This neat is very distinct from the rest of the ring, as it's the only thing lower than 5 floors, and has a very bright neon design around the tower. This is one of the few things in Ring 1 that does not have a gradient. The frame colours are in a muted, vibrant tone. Meme had no official release date that I could find, but it was released fairly early into NTOC development. Meme also has its own portal room. This room has a mini section that represents each floor, Meme is a collaboration between four people, Naji Mandroid, Games Bros, Undiced Zero, and Mark Warmer Dam Love. For this next section, instead of having a montage, I made a meme commentary on this neat two and a half years ago. So I think it would be fun to go through that and show the most strange and interesting moments. Let us go back to the 3rd of September 2021. Today, we are doing mo most epic miraculous escalation. Uh, now, you gotta click that thing on the, the guy, and then you can get teleported to this room. Each floor represents, like, each colour obviously represents a floor and what it has. So, slow sense glitch. Ew. <laughs> From this truss, just flick off, and just keep going around until you press this one button. Once you- Oh, sorry, there is a ton of skips. There is a skip literally right here. I will just, I will tell you it and it may get patched because you skip this entire floor. You can actually flick up here and your hand can touch and teleport and teleport you to the start the next floor. Also another skip is if you do four, you can just like high jump onto that truss. But, this is the tubarão que é o lição, ó. Aí, ó. Tá bom, chega. Você vai bom. Button. I would recommend doing that as like a skip. I don't think it will get patched. That's why I've shown it. There's not really much consequence to folding if you cannot really be. Oh my god, I stuck. If you cannot really be bothered to do that, I can just jump onto this. I can go up, and they can jump onto this ladder. Ah, uh, this is really weird. Be careful to not wipe yourself across walls too often. I know that sounds weird, but your balloon can go downwards and it can literally make it impossible. I can just high jump onto these, but I'm not gonna do it. Like, actually I'll just show it, like that. But I'll do it, like, it shouldn't give you much struggle if you're already here. Though, do be careful to move kind of slowly, otherwise it's super easy to slip up. This one is one of the tougher ones, and I did it, yay! That's one challenge, and we have to do five. Oh, maybe only one. <laughs> I literally played it before. Oh, this was like the hardest, if not the second. Why did I do 
why it gave you misinformation, sorry. That's most of the scary challenges done, right? Pass it, and that's that one. And now we just have the easiest challenge left. Once you press that button, you can now go back, because, yep, we did all challenges. Nice. Another stairs. So jump to where the stairs are opposing your movement. So like that, head headers. And you can jump onto the wind pad and win. That was interesting. Anyway, what is good about me? Despite the design being very different from the rest of the ring, I loved the vibrant ideas it has. The gameplay goes along with this, being a great complement to the design. The gameplay was simple yet fun and entertaining, while also being consistent in difficulty. There was a great variation of floor ideas. Each floor felt new and not an extension of the previous floor. The punishment felt fair and reasonable. There weren't any areas that were super punishing and spiked in difficulty. The last positive thing is that meme is very memorable. But this doesn't mean that there aren't any flaws. The route progression was fairly confusing. This is best highlighted in the timed button areas. The gameplay could have been more varied. Same problem with Tower of Violet Pillaring. The gameplay had jumps with the same idea. While they did minimally vary, it was not by enough to feel fresh. The music kind of fit. Better music could have been selected to further immerse the experience. Welcome to the first Citadel we are covering in Unknown Fan Games, and this is a very strange creation. Citadel of Basalt Enigmas is a very random Citadel with references to flowers and awfully strange gameplay. The experience it provides is, I'll just say incredibly unique. Synthopy has designed this Citadel as the purposefully different and strange thing in Ring 1. The Citadel has around 4 or 5 strange flowers. These flowers appear before checkpoints. On the topic of checkpoints, this Citadel utilises them to increase the raw gameplay difficulty. The raw gameplay is around remorseless, but there is a checkpoint every 3 to 5 floors. The checkpoints lead you into a basement area with additional obby that needs to be completed. This Citadel is definitely a different experience. I had an abysmal time with it, failing the second last floor around three times. And the final stretch once. Anyway, the Citadel is currently mid-intense at 6.62 or 50.21 times harder than Tower of Newcomers. In my opinion, it is baseline remorseless at 7.03 or 66.72 times harder than Tower of Newcomers. The second last floor used to be an insta-kill, but it was recently changed to a teleporter, which is amazing, as you would lose upwards of 30 minutes of progress if you failed the second last floor which is reflecting the pretty long nature of it. It is around 40 minutes in length, close to double the length of the second longest tower, which is Tower of Questionable Win. Again, instead of a montage, I streamed my first playthrough of the Citadel, but unfortunately I lost the first stream, which was my first playthrough, so I decided to play it again on stream. Um, we're going to be doing Citadel of Basalt Enigmas again, because I lost the I lost the original one. Yeah, so I've died too many times to the final area. I know exactly what to expect, and I know that this is going to be one hell of a run-through of it. it. As usual, the first few floors are incredibly easy, though. It kind of feels like I'm making a guide off that. <laughs> Except they don't make guides anymore, sadly. We're just going to be exploring all the plants and just, yeah, given my general thoughts on this. And for whatever reason, NTRC has optimization issues. That means that I'm probably going to have to change my graphics to be lower. Just. Yeah, put it a lot lower. Th those really weird squeeze jumps like that. Those are cool. They remind me of some Minecraft towers. You could probably skip a little bit if I just go boop. Oh my god, that was... I made some noises. Okay, let's, like, get the button progress. Oh, sorry, I haven't played Obbies in, like, a week. Whee. Oh yeah, the plants, let's read them. The 
Passiflora incarnata, also known as the purple passion flower, is a herbaceous plant most commonly found in the southeastern US. Its shape gives it the resemblance of messy hair. I don't have that on my head. Oh no no! This music is funky. We are at this floor now. We're making really good progress. Unfortunately, this is a pretty long citadel. So, I think I have the clips put in the video for whenever I edit this. Um, I failed once at the very final stretch that's incredibly easy. I failed two or three times at the other section. Also, uh, I'm just gonna do this because it's a skip. <laughs> Smartest person ever. There we go. As I said, there's actually more skips than I expected in this thing. I'm just gonna say this once for now, but um, yeah, thanks for all the support on my recent videos. That's just for you. Thanks for all the recent support. I've been trying. <laughs> Oh, this part makes me really, really nervous. This is another very goofy one with some very, very hard jumps in it. Although this is nowhere near as hard as the last couple floors. The last couple floors spike up so much. <laughs> anyway, we have our second plant. Um, The Drosa ca capensis, also known as the Cape Sundew, is a carnivorous plant most commonly found in South Africa. It uses its roll-out leaves to catch small insects. The mucus it secretes is also very acidic and harmful, so be careful. That's one of my favorite plants. That's cool. Didn't get a first attempt that time. That was a clean flick. All right, we've done one. I think these count as floors because they should, they're floor-sized. Ooh, look at this sketchy area. I mean, the atmosphere in this area is good. Oh, this jump is really hard. Okay. This floor is one of the spike ones. They, it spikes by a good bit. Look at how good my progress is already. And I haven't played obbies in so long. <laughs> Relatively long. It's been at least a week since I've been editing. And that has taken all my time. Anyway, one of my least favorite parts is right here. Because it spikes a little bit. Just a bit, not a lot, but just like a bit. But luckily we have the button, so even if I do fall, at least I have progress. Awesome, next floor. Isn't the next button thingy at the yellow floor? Okay, another plan. The Hylum, Hy Hydalum Pecky, or the Bleeding Tooth Fungus, is a rare type of fungi that grows in North America. The fungi see secretes blood-like spores across its surface. While the fungi is edible, it definitely isn't tasty. I would not be eating that. Please, okay. Time to hate this. Oh my goodness, that was so close. So my strategy was to use the like rebound for extra momentum. Please, okay, awesome. More button progress. That means that we've almost 100% gotten to the last floor. <laughs> wow, look at this very image. I have no clue where that is, but we'll find our way to it. I think if we go up here, oh yeah, it's this one right here, this thing right here. The image didn't show it, but hey, we found it. Oh, these are the worst floors. <laughs> if I do fall, then I can just jump up here to skip a little bit. Oh yeah, plant here. The Carusa umbrella, also known as the wine cup flower, is a vibrant flower found in South Africa. It was famous for the wine cup shape around the base of each stem. The flower is easy to take care. Wow. Oh, okay. We're good. We're good. We have a checkpoint. This jump. Oh, nope. Okay. 
Yeah, and it's a die there. Rip. Citadel of Basalt Enigmas has distinct gameplay that no other tower, steeple, or citadel provides. The rap progression also goes well with the unusual gameplay. They both synergize together to give you a one-off experience. It develops a gloomy atmosphere which thrives with the dark floor colours. The unorganised chaos works well in some aspects. I feel like the chaos was all on the same page, being very unpredictable. Time to get into the floors. To start off, the punishment is done incredibly poorly. The gameplay is non-punishing remorseless gameplay up until the second final floor, where there is punishing remorseless gameplay. This was changed recently, but it still has inconsistent punishment. This also leads into the second floor, which is the difficulty is not consistent. The floors range anywhere from low intense to mid high remorseless. This is an issue as most of the punishing floors are the hardest. The citadel feels like it's trying to be random. I find this as a disadvantage as it feels extreme and does not have any structure. And as a combination of all of this, the Citadel is just not fun to play in my opinion. This could be because I had an abysmal experience with it though. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's currently the most ambitious and like large part of the series so far. Being like 33 minutes, what, 6 minutes longer than the last episode. It may not sound like a lot, but it's a lot more to edit. Anyways, yeah, thank you so much for watching through this video, and this will be part 2 to Naji's Towers of Craziness. I don't know if I'll do a part 3, but probably at some point, probably eventually, I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, see ya!